running on a beach. I'm, I'm not that Pam Anderson, as clearly obvious. Um, I get that question a lot from pizza delivery guys. Like, really? No, 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 no. Hi, I'm Pam Anderson, a Republican candidate for Colorado Secretary of State. Thank you for having me. I visited uh, for a few minutes, a few minutes for a talk last time, and you kindly offered to give me a little time uh, for this meeting. Ballots are out. So who's returned their ballot already? Yeah, OK, so you're decided. So I'm not going to convince anyone. But uh, if, if you've decided and cast your vote, and as your Secretary of Can State candidate, that's what I care about, for you to be thoughtful about your ballot, turn it in, and it to be safely and accurately counted and processed. And you know that your ballot was counted. Who signed up for their email text message opportunity? That's great. It is a wonderful thing. I um, want to tell you a little bit about myself first. I uh, have lived in Colorado for about 30 years. I'd like to introduce you to my husband, this handsome devil right here, Jay. He imported me from college. Um, we went to California Lutheran University and um, we fell in love and then I moved here. I grew up in Ventura County, California. Um, if those of you have been to the Reagan Library and gone out to the patio where the memorial is, and you look over that valley, that's the valley I grew up in. So my first campaign was, uh, I was 13 years old, 13 and 14, I turned 14, and handed out bumper stickers for Ronald Reagan. It was very formative for me uh, in my political leanings as well as um, my work. I um, remember trust but verify mm -hmm. and that phrase for elections. And no one really grows up and says, I'm going to be an election official when they're a little kid. Um, but this is how I, I became an election official. Um, I was a precinct committee person. I was a district captain for the party in Jefferson County. Um, Jay and I have lived in Wheat Ridge for 28, almost 28 years next month since we got married. Um, we raised two kids, go farmers, uh, that went to Wheat Ridge High School. My youngest just graduated from college, uh, and neither one of them have moved back home yet, so we're, bat we're batting a 1,000. Um, and when they were real little, I was going to the rec center um, in Wheat Ridge, and the petition was circulating outside. And I signed it, I've, I talked to the person circulating it, and then found out later that they had, it was a fraudulent petition, and that they were planning on running a clerk, a city clerk, which was an elected position in Wheat Ridge. And I went home and I was, you know, had, I was I, I, like this, well, that's just wrong. And, and Jay said, well, you should run for that, because I had been a legislative aide at the General Assembly for four different legislators. I liked the policy side, but I never imagined I'd run for office. But something got me moving, right? And that's how I became the municipal clerk. I had two opponents in that race. And sounds familiar. I have a primary with two opponents in this race as well. And I ran for municipal clerk, and I served there, and then went on and served two terms as the Jefferson County Clerk and Recorder. Um, these jobs are professional management jobs. They have a lot of political overlays. You deal with a lot of politics. You deal with a lot of law, a lot of statute. We were talking, Karen and I were talking about that a little bit. And uh, I, was, I was really interested and really fell in love with the elections administration side. So when I was term limited after two terms, I started a consulting business. Jay and I also have small businesses. Um, I'm the money guy for his manufacturing, but uh, small business manufacturing. And you know, taking that business experience and applying it to the, the management job that I've done um, was very gratifying. I had at the clerk and recorder's office a team of, um, when I came in, it was 122 full-time employees. 
And when I left, there were 109.5. There wasn't half a person running around, but we had a part-time person. And, uh, and that management side was something that I very much enjoyed in taking services and making it more efficient. We were able, during the most difficult financial times, the Great Recession, to get more efficient, provide more access for services at the clerk and recorder's office for businesses, our industry partners, because we need to stay out of the way of business. Let them do their work and get the heck out because they've got better things to do. Um, with my business, I I've, uh, was served as the executive director for the Clerks Association, where I led in advocacy for them and training and education for all 64 clerks in Colorado. And I worked very closely with the last six secretaries of state both as in my capacity as a county clerk and then as executive director. And in 2018, we had a lot of turnover. We had a 30% turnover in clerks and also in the Secretary of State's office. You remember the painful wave year, right? Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of experience, good county clerks through retirement and um, some electoral outcomes. And, uh, and I started seeing a disturbing trend particularly at the Secretary of State's office with hyper-partisan rhetoric and po politics being the filter for leading in that position or lack of leadership is the argument I'm going to make. Um, I am singularly focused in running against Jenna Griswold and I'll tell you why. She has had over a 200% turnover in her top leadership staff. There has been a huge morale dip. There are really good people that have worked at the Secretary of State's office on the business side and on the election side. And every decision is, at that office is, is made through a political hyperpartisan lens. And that, that hyperpartisanship has really placed fuel on the fire of mistrust and distrust here in Colorado, particularly in the election side. Um, there are people of good conscience that have questions about elections and how they're run. And instead of answering those questions, she has vilified people for them or raised millions of dollars in weaponizing her office from a political perspective. And I believe that is wrong for Colorado, absolutely wrong. And it's why I'm running. As the Jefferson County Clerk and Recorder, and as a business owner, I'm the only candidate in the race that's a federally certified election official, state certified election official, and have the business background to lead in that department. Uh, and I, I am the only uh, candidate in the race with a record on voting integrity. And I'll tell you what I did as the clerk and recorder. Um, I had some questions when I became the county clerk about mail ballot and whether or not it was secure. And I know a lot of people have some of those things. Um, we use signature verification. We use bipartisan teams. We have judges that are appointed by the parties that validate the signature on every ballot that is cast. That's really important, but I had questions about whether or not that was a good process. Um, so because I'm married to an engineer, um, our daughter just graduated with an aeronautical engineering degree. Yep. And our son is, is going up to CU with a PhD program in science and biology and microbiology. And I was a history major. So I, I you know, you, you tend to absorb these things. But one of the things that I did was develop a quality assurance audit for signature verification for every election I conducted that, that tested and sampled the job they were doing. Is the training good? Do they get tired? Does anybody know the average age of a, a poll worker? or an election worker? 67. A little bit higher. In my office, it was about 72, right? And so, and that makes sense because you have, you know, retired people have more time to commit to that. But, um, hi, Brenda. Um, so, I, you know, I developed an audit. When I had questions, I developed tools through my background and experience to test the process. Did the same with voter lists in Jefferson County operational audits and checking how are our voter lists maintained, where can they improve, are we, are we doing a good job on data entry, all of those things. I've seen an erosion of that type of work at the Secretary of State's office, and those are the types of things that I would bring to the state in helping to take those best practices, figure out we know where the issues are. 
Um, in 2019, automatic voter registration was passed. In itself, it's actually not a bad thing if done well. I'll tell you why. Automatic voter registration utilizes driver's licenses, right? And driver's licenses are actually our most secure form of ID, right? It, you have to have proof of citizenship for that. The issue comes is when you have people that get driver's licenses that may not stay here for a, a, any length of time. And so these issues have been identified by the county, sent to the state, and completely ignored. Um, we did not support automatic voter registration in its form. We wanted a pilot so that we could work out some of these bugs here and there. And that wasn't acceptable at the legislature. Um, but I believe that since we know where those issues are, we don't have to, you know, when you look at the public list, that's only a portion of what you see in that database. There is a lot of confidential information that the general public doesn't have access to. And so we wouldn't have to waste any time in doing projects to develop it. I've already done it as a county clerk and could hit the ground running to make sure that we are uh, doing all of the best practices and audits that I've d were done at, at the local cloud level when I was <coughs> county clerk. Um, when I came in, this is at the risk of dating myself, you guys remember punch cards, hanging chads, right? <laughs> so voting integrity is not a new issue. Um, I've done this almost 20 years and have asked, been answering a lot of the same questions we answer usually after presidential elections. At, was answering a lot of the same questions we're asking now when Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. With every technology, you need to have the security around it to ensure that that outcome is correct. When I came in, it was all electronic DRE touchscreens, right? So you, you did not have a paper trail. I led on ensuring that every voter votes on a voter verified paper ballot, and that is incredibly important. Um, I received a medallion award from the National Association of Secretaries of State on our work for post-election audits. And that work, I don't know a single competent clerk or election official or secretary that believes that work is ever done because of changes in technology, because of updates, because of things we learn in every single election. It's why, as an advocate for the Clerks Association, we had cleanup bills in every legislative session because we learned new things. Um, I have the background and experience in all of those things, as well as um, best practices. Um, as part of my work uh, after being a clerk and recorder, I've been in Pennsylvania at the House of Representatives. The Re Republican majority asked me to come out and testify as an expert witness on how they can improve their processes. I was on the ground for the hand recount in Georgia and saw that reconciliation. I've been in Maricopa County, I've been in Nevada, and all of that background experience I would use to serve Colorado in continuing to improve our process. I'm very proud of the elections we do here in Colorado. They are evidence-based and they are public and transparent meaning the people doing your elections are your neighbors and your friends appointed by the parties. The watchers are incredibly important to that. Jenna Griswold rolled back transparency for in, in the watcher scenario unnecessarily, in my opinion. And those things are so important to give confidence to the public on outcomes. So there's still work to do. Um, I do know that it's a pretty perky primary some of you may have heard. Um, and there's, you know, usually for secretary of state or clerk and recorder, you opened, Karen, with what does a clerk and recorder do? What does a secretary do? And this year, that's changed a little bit. Um, there are out-of-state out dark money groups spending money in this campaign. Um, and I am a pretty good straight shooter. My dad was a cop. Both my sisters are cops. Their husbands are cops. And I want to address something right up, right up front. Um, I don't know Mark Zuckerberg. I've never met Mark Zuckerberg. I've never taken any money from Mark Zuckerberg. But what is true is I served in many capacities on different nonprofits, like Karen does when she goes and serves on the school board as a conservative to go to these tables, to use your background and experience to move the needle, to move the ball on the things we care about. 
and the things I've cared about and the organizations that I've worked with care about improving elections, supporting local election officials, keeping elections local. HR1 was a horrible piece of legislation I opposed. I actually read it. I'm pretty sure Jenna didn't. She came out in support within minutes. It's a, almost a thousand page bill. And, and these are the types of things that I will continue to go to the table for and fight for. Um, and so don't, don't, don't buy the rhetoric. You can go to the website or you can ask me all the questions right now and come directly to the source. You should know that I will continue to fight for local election officials. We, we filled a funding gap in 2020 that was necessary because of secretaries like Jenna Griswold who used half the COVID money, almost $3 million on commercials for herself to elevate her per political profile. Any legislation I have for my entire career supported full funding of elections to straight to the local election officials, I'll continue to do that when I become your secretary. It's why people like um, Governor Owens, U.S. Senator Hank Brown, John Southers, all have faith in me and have endorsed my campaign. It's why I believe in law and order and advocate fiercely for the laws we believe in, but then you have to follow them. And so why uh, U.S. Attorney Jason Dunn supports me, um, why every, uh, the last several secretaries of state, including Wayne Williams, Mike Kaufman, Gigi Dennis, and Donetta Davidson all support my effort um, to be secretary because they know I have that background and experience and you will always know where I stand. We may not always agree, but you will always know where I stand. And what I stand for is responsible governing no more high turnover, serving our business community, improving elections, and making sure that your constitutional rights are easily accessible and secure. They are not mutually exclusive. And I'll continue that work. It's my life's work. And I hope that you will tell a friend. You can go to andersonforsos.com for more information. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay.